Before we begin, I'd like to thank Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and of course, our socially distant technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. Joining Brad and I this morning is our very special guest, Serene Zawari Krasuna. Am I correct? I'm going to make you pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Registered and licensed dietitian and coordinator of Mercy Weight Management. Good morning, Serene, and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to Again, she, she tells us this is her seventh appearance. <laughs> All right. Well, just as the freshman 15 is synonymous with the first year of college, the quarantine 19 has become a common way to refer to the weight gain during the COVID-19 pandemic. As holidays approach, we find ourselves trying not to add the holiday five to that total. This morning, we're going to talk with Serene about healthy eating during the holiday season and perhaps a tip or two on what to do if we found some of the quarantine 19 on our scales. I want to give a public service announcement also that if uh, you still haven't gotten your flu vaccine, we have flu vaccine available to medicine centers. So please stop in and get your vaccination today to protect yourself against all things floating around out there, including the pandemic. Um, so, you know, practice good habits and get your flu vaccine today if you haven't gotten it. We'd also like to remind our, remind our listeners that our program is available on our podcast. So you can search your favorite podcast app for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and subscribe to our program. I think that everybody, Serene, I think that everybody probably knows you because of the number of times you've been on the show. <laughs> but for those listeners, you might need to kind of introduce yourself and tell us what you do at Mercy Medical Center. Sounds good. So I'm a dietitian at Mercy. I work in the weight management department. So we just specialize in helping people lose weight, whether it's five pounds or 100 pounds. So we have a fun time over there. So what about Mercy Weight Management Program and, and the programs you offer? So it's nice because we're conveniently located on Mercy's main campus. Um, we offer quite a few different options. We actually have five different options, but we are tailoring our programs to you know help people lose weight if they like i said have five pounds 50 pounds 100 pounds plus to lose we can help them out we use meal replacements if they are interested it's called optifast or we can do you know one-on-one -on -one counseling to help them lose the weight so we're there to meet anyone's needs so we just personalize plans based on lifestyle so the average American gains weight over this upcoming holiday season. And, and now that everybody is somewhat incarcerated in, in their homes, and <laughs> don't go out and don't do this and don't do that. Uh, I would suspect it's going to be a little heavier this year. What do you think? I'm with you on that. Now, typically the average American gains a couple of pounds over the holidays from Thanksgiving through New Year's and takes a little bit of time to lose that weight. And sometimes, I mean, just talking with people, they say it's kind of easy to just gain every year over the holidays over and over again. So sometimes it's not as easy to lose that weight. However, this year is a little bit different because, you know, we have that added factor of being at home more so. And I know Brad and I were chatting a little bit before we started and people did really good at the beginning of the quarantine, you know, wanting to exercise and all these companies offering these free promotions for exercise, you know, where you can do it virtually. And I think as the quarantine kind of happened to extend longer than any of us thought, it kind of got a little bit harder, a little bit more stressful. You know, all of us are adjusting our jobs to this ongoing, you know, pandemic. So we're, we're expecting to see a little bit more this year, unfortunately. However, you know, there are nice kind of programs in place to help people out, whether it's virtually or, you know, being a dietitian, there's so many different options. So hopefully, you know, people do take advantage of that. We know, we know it's going to be um, somewhat different this year as, as far as people not, well, a lot of people not getting together in big party, whatever's. And, and, you know, we had this, I don't know whether this is true or not, but after Thanksgiving, we had this bump up of corona like, you know and are we going to have the same thing after christmas and and so what do we do here <laughs> go into somebody's house to say okay i'm only gonna have one drink and one cookie or or, 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 or what's the game what's the game plan here you know it's hard to say what the you know the safest thing to do and people 
want to still keep those holiday traditions alive. So something that I've, you know, suggested is I've had a lot of patients say, you know, I still want to make my holiday cookies. So we've talked about, you know, healthier substitutions for that, for holiday cookies. Um, we talked about limiting how often people have holiday cookies, but we still have to, you know, worry about gaining that extra weight, even though we, we're not having all these parties, let's say, but I know people are doing like cookie drop-offs where they make their cookies like they normally would. And instead of having people over, they're dropping them off to their house. So we still have to just be cautious about that because we could gain the weight just as easily. Okay. Locale cookies, huh? Yeah. Now do you now do you tell your, your patients how to, how to bake low calorie stuff? <laughs> I do. It is a really common uh, question this time of year. Um, I have a Thanksgiving recipe for a crustless pumpkin pie that people really actually like. Hmm. So I tend to give that recipe out every year. What's what's the sweetener you use in that? Stevia. Stevia, do you really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that the easiest to bake with? S substitute sugar? Probably substitute. not the easiest, but it's the healthiest. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So what other substitutions can we make in our cooking this year to make dinner a little healthier? That's a good question. So I always encourage people to incorporate more vegetables. We typically, you know, tend to remember the protein, the starch, but a lot of times we forget that vegetable. So it's a great idea to have a couple options, whether it's a salad and a cooked vegetable or two different types of cooked vegetables. Because if you load up on a low calorie option, you are less likely to have as big of a portion from the higher calorie foods. Plus the fiber helps fill you up as well. So you're not getting as much from um, the starch, let's say, which is a higher calorie option. And with your protein too, if you do lean protein, that's gonna be more beneficial like chicken or turkey or even fish, that's gonna be less salty typically as well compared to let's say a ham. Um, and then a nice twist on mashed potatoes that I like recommending is doing baked potatoes. And if you just kind of get ones that are not too big, but that way one, it's a little bit easier for you to make because you know, you just wrap them up and you can throw them in the oven. But also you can kind of have a nice topping bar where you do, you know, green onions, um, even plain Greek yogurt in place of the sour cream can help cut back on calories and fat. So that's kind of a good option. Um, you know, to keep your baked potato healthier. Now, instead of mashed potatoes, which would have, you know, the added calories and fat from the butter and the milk, it's a great way to cut back. But those are kind of some substitutions that you could try to make for your holiday meals. What do you suggest for appetizers? Since those can be kind of a challenge to, uh, you know, it's just a little appetizer, right? It's, yeah, it's not exactly. going to make that much difference. A little bite here, a little bite there. And that could definitely add up. You know, you're looking at a couple hundred extra calories just from those appetizers. So I always encourage lower calorie ones, especially vegetables. And you can make those so festive. I mean, they have these, if you Google, um, you know, uh, vegetable trays for the holidays, they have really cute snowman ones and they use cauliflower as like the body of the snowman. They have Christmas tree ones and you, where you use broccoli for the greens and you decorate it with like, you know, carrots, things like that. So, you know, making it fun and making it healthy is great. And again, if you have kids, that would be a great activity to do with them as well, because they get so excited about those things. And then fruit as well would be a good appetizer. You know, you're not getting all that extra fat from the appetizer if you stick with those fruits and vegetables. All right, so now then let's talk about baking. You know, cookies are a crutch in our household. So what can we do um, to maybe enjoy some of these sweet treats a little healthier? The nice thing is you could still have, you know, that tradition of the baking, which I know a lot of us do enjoy doing, you know, whether it's with our parents or our kids or grandkids. A couple of things you could try out is you can actually replace um, sugar and use applesauce. And it actually makes your holiday baking more moist, which is nice. I've done it more so with cakes and it just turns out really flavorful using that applesauce in place of the sugar. Um, applesauce can also take the place of oil or even eggs. So the nice thing is, you know, you cut back on fat and sugar 
and then you just have you know a little bit more moisture so it's not so dry and you just use the even conversion so if it's one cup of sugar it would be one cup of applesauce so isn't there a lot of sugar in applesauce if you get the unsweetened one good point if you get the unsweetened one then you don't have any added sugar it's just Gee, what's sugar. what's the what's the unsweetened one taste like <laughs> 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 See, the good thing is you're mixing it with other things, so we don't have to worry about tasting it raw. <laughs> okay. It'll just give it more moisture. Gotcha. Something else you could do is you could take a banana and mash it up, and you can use that in place of oil if a recipe calls for oil. Um, that helps cut back on the fat, definitely. It gives you more nutrients, and you would just use half a banana to one cup of oil, let's say. So, excuse me, I should say, you would mash up the banana, measure, let's say it gives you half of a cup, and the recipe calls for one cup of oil, that would be the perfect conversion for that. And the nice thing with bananas to talk about is you can even make pancakes out of bananas, which is nice. You know, it's just a really good substitute, um, and it's healthy, and like I said, it gives you, you a lot of your nutrients, your potassium, things like that. Um, a lot of us know that egg whites are a really good substitution for whole eggs. So that's going to get rid of the cholesterol that's found in the yolk. So we're going to consume, you know, less fat that way, which is especially helpful for somebody who has high cholesterol and, you know, maybe on cholesterol medication. And you would do two egg whites to one whole egg. Um, and another thing to mention too is, you know, avocados are very popular the last number of years. So if you use three fourths of a serving of avocado in place of a serving of butter, that is a really good conversion. You could do that for baking or even cooking. It's really good with, you know, when you're cooking food, especially meats to use the avocado just because, you know, it softens the food up. Um, and that way you get less saturated fat. You know, you're still gonna have fat from the avocado, but it's gonna be the healthy unsaturated fat, which doesn't necessarily clog our arteries like the saturated fat would. And then as always, you can use like a whole wheat flour in place of a white flour with an even conversion there. So it's nice because there's a lot of things that you could do to make your recipe a little bit healthier, but still be able to enjoy those treats. Hey, Rich. Hey, well, very good. All right. Well, I think it's time for our first commercial break. You are listening to Health Matters with okay. the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. From 1976 to the new year, 2020, we've been part of the Canton community. This year, we celebrate 44 years of service. Thank you for your business and continued support of the Medicine Center Pharmacies. A lot has changed in the pharmacy world over the past 44 years, but one thing hasn't, our commitment to your health. Stop by your local Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Mercy Medical Center wants you to know we are here for you literally and virtually. For our patient safety, Mercy is providing virtual doctor appointments from the comfort of your home. This service is available for staff care, urgent care, seven days a week. And Mercy Primary Sorry, Care Sorry, Serene. We have a we bricklayer on the scene. And in Mercy.org. Fixing our chimneys. For office and appointment hours, Mercy Telehealth visits are simple, convenient, and can be used by anyone who has access to a smartphone, tablet, or computer. Computer. Our Mercy representatives are ready and happy to assist you. So, whether you are in need of urgent care for minor illnesses and injuries or would like a one on one with a Mercy primary care physician, Mercy is here for you. Mercy Medical Center, you have one more, Red. More Two more. CantonMercy.org. When, we, when we come back, telehealth. that's CantonMercy.org slash telehealth. Online appointments are considered medical services and will be billed to your insurance co pays and deductibles apply. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. In these difficult times, please stay calm and make sure your medical and healthcare supplies are well stocked. Have Kleenex, pain relievers, fever reducers such as Tylenol and cough syrup like Robitussin, Dayquil, cough drops and maybe a humidifier, and 
And make sure you take a good multivitamin like Linus Pauling Super Multivitamins. Also, you might get a good probiotic and make sure that you get plenty of rest and plenty of nutritious food. The Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. You know us. We're the Half Off and Hot Pie Store in Louisville. Our Christmas treat to you is 50% off of our already half-off Christmas seasonal merchandise on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Our lighted Christmas pictures are a knockout, and we have a huge inventory. Don't miss this sale. The Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. See us on Facebook and check our website, halfoffhotbuy.com. Listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now, here's your host, Paul White. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brad and I are discussing healthy eating with Serene Zawari Kusana, Kusana, registered and licensed dietitian and coordinator of Mercy Weight Management. She's really given us some tips here. So, Get your notepad out, get your recorder out, whatever, whatever, because you got a bake of stuff and you can't eat too much sugar because you're stuck in a house. <laughs> All right. Well, we were talking about a lot of good tips for baking before the break, and I appreciate those. And I've used applesauce in my pancakes before, and I challenge anyone to notice the difference instead of oil. But um, so that's an interesting tip. I didn't realize you could do it in place of sugars too. So that's kind of yep. neat. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about adult beverages. Since um, Christmas parties are going to be a little truncated this year, um, we may feel like keeping some traditions alive, like having uh, a fun eggnog or something else might be in order to help us cope with the challenges of the world. So <laughs> Shereen, Shereen, what should we do to avoid drinking all our calories? And um, are there some drinks that might be a little more favorable than others? That's a really good question, especially this time of year. Um, you know, eggnog is a very traditional drink. With eggnog, you have to be a little cautious because of, you know, if you make it the traditional way or if you buy the traditional eggnog, it's gonna have a lot of extra fat and a lot of extra sugar. So you, you have to be really careful with that because if you, you know, consume it often or if you have a glass you know a couple times a week that can definitely cause you to gain weight now the positive thing is that you can make a few substitutions now in the store you could buy like a low fat version of it um well they just don't add as much fat they use instead of whole milk they'll use skim milk so that definitely cuts back significantly on the fat you know i've seen ones that have been as high as um, 15 or 16 grams of total fat for half of a cup and when they switch to the low fat, you're looking at about three grams for half of a cup of the egg bog. So it's kind of nice to be able to cut back, but you're still looking at a significant amount of added sugar. So I tell people, if you're gonna have it, then make it at home. That's the best option. And it's nice because you can go online and find all different types of recipes. You know, you can even use almond milk if you <laughs> don't like regular milk or if you, you know, have an allergy or intolerance. So. The nice thing is, you know, you could do all these different substitutions, but, um, you know, with eggnog, let's say if you, you know, use almond milk, you, then, you know, you're cutting back on fat as well. And then you can use stevia, like I had mentioned earlier for the sugar, that'll help cut back significantly on your sugar intake. So you just kind of want to be cautious with that. There's also other drinks like, um, carbonated and sparkling waters or mixers, actually. There's a brand called Zevia that actually uses Stevia as their sugar substitute in there. And you can use their mixers to make you know, your traditional drinks. So the nice thing, it's, it's very, uh, nowadays it's kind of more beneficial for us to have these healthier you know, traditional drinks or the healthier twists on our traditional drinks. You just want to, you know, be cautious about how much you're having. Now, you're not going to these holiday parties where you may, you know, drink a little bit more than if you were at home, which is nice. You know, it's a good way to limit yourself. Um, but you still kind of want to just be cautious because it's very easy to get in a lot of extra fat and sugar from these drinks. So a, a traditional 
traditional eggnog off the shelf uh, uh, calories and fat and you know, what are we looking at calorie wise for a, a dose of it <laughs> lots of calories <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too many i should say um you know it's it's tough because it depends what brand you get you know what kind you get but for example if you go to you know a local coffee shop you and you get you know an eggnog coffee drink let's say you're looking at you know, maybe for a 16 ounce drink, 450 calories, Jeez. but you're looking at probably around 50 grams of sugar, just depending on where you go. Mm. Now that's a lot because the average American woman should only have um, no more than 25 grams of added sugar a day. And males should have no more than 37 and a half grams of added sugar a day. So if you're looking at, you know, a 16 ounce and it's giving you about 50 grams, that's taking you a little bit higher. So, you know, it's not going to have the alcohol in it, but it's going to have the coffee in it. I know a lot of people you know, do enjoy kind of those coffee flavored um, holiday drinks. <laughs> My father-in-law used to put brandy and bourbon. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> That'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> now, the nice thing is you can actually take the extracts. So I know a lot of people like to put rum in their eggnog. You could take that rum extract, which yep. you know is just the flavoring of rum, and you could add that to your own version, which okay. is nice because then you don't have those calories. You know, rum's not going to have, you know, the, the fat in it or anything like that, but it's going to have those extra calories. So it's a nice way to still have that flavor, but not have to, you know, worry about it those extra added on huh. okay bottom of the hour time for the news thanks for listening this morning you're listening to health matters with the medicine center pharmacy and your hosts pharmacists paul white and brad white remember you can get more information right now by visiting medshoprx.com that's m-e-d-s-h-o-p-r-x.com We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Everybody is on the front line in this fight now, so we need your help. Mask up, wash up, and back up. WHBC AM10, reliable as ever on News Talk 1480 WHBC. From the News Talk 1480 WHBC Newsroom, the Camp Urban League and other groups are sponsoring a Christmas celebration and giveaway this afternoon at the Southeast Community Center on Sherrick Road Southeast. There are really hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gifts and, uh, and, and many, many giveaways. That is Mayor Tom Burnaby. Among other items to be handed out in a COVID-safe way, coats, hats, gloves, food, and more. Santa will also be there as well. It all goes from noon until 7. One of the country's most popular tourist destinations shutting down to travelers as COVID-19 continues to surge. Vacation travel to Lake Tahoe will be banned for at least three weeks. It all gets started today. Time Magazine has named President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris 2020's Person of the Year. They top Donald Trump, Dr. Anthony Fauci, and frontline health care workers, as well as the movement for racial justice. The honorees otherwise also include LeBron James as Athlete of the Year, BTS as Entertainer of the Year, and Zoom CEO Eric Ewan as Business Person of the Year. Time Magazine started tradition back in 1927. More news coming up at 10 o'clock. I'm Pam Cook. Mercy Medical Center wants you to know we are here for you literally and virtually. For our patient safety, Mercy is providing virtual doctor appointments from the comfort of your home. This service is available for staff care, urgent care, seven days a week, and Mercy Primary Care Monday through Friday. See our website at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth for office and appointment hours. Mercy telehealth visits are simple, convenient, and can be used by anyone who has access to a smartphone, tablet, or computer. 
computer. Our Mercy representatives are ready and happy to assist you. So, whether you are in need of urgent care for minor illnesses and injuries or would like a one-on-one with a Mercy primary care physician, Mercy is here for you. Mercy Medical Center telehealth appointments. Learn more at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. That's cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. Online appointments are considered medical services and will be billed to your insurance copays and deductibles apply. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. In these difficult times, please stay calm and make sure your medical and health care supplies are well stocked. Have Kleenex, pain relievers, fever reducers such as Tylenol and cough syrup like Robitussin, Dayquil, cough drops and maybe a humidifier. And make sure you take a good multivitamin like Linus Pauling Super Multivitamins. Also, you might get a good probiotic and make sure that you get plenty of rest and plenty of nutritious food. The Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. It's a winter wonderland at Studio Arts and Glass. Our annual holiday open house now through Thanksgiving. Take 20% off your entire order. Hand-blown glass ornaments, your Santas, jewelry, come make a wreath or a glass snowflake. 20% off your entire order. See our extended holiday hours at studioartsandglass.com. Shop local this holiday season. Yes, we are open. We are open. The Medicine Center Pharmacies and the Half Off and Out Buy Store in Louisville are open. Some great services are still in play. Our drive through windows, curb service, and our enhanced delivery service. Our stores are fully inventoried and fully staffed for your convenience. 13 pharmacists to help you with your medications and over-the-counter so don't hesitate to visit us or use one of our services. Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, New Philadelphia, and Minerva. Your severe weather station, News Talk 1480 WHBC. Here's your AccuWeather forecast. Could bump into a little bit of fog this morning. Otherwise, sun and high clouds, a mild day, high 57. Cloudy tonight, low 44. Cloudy and mild from afternoon rain tomorrow, the high 55. Clouds in a passing shower tomorrow night, low 41. Cloudy day on Sunday, the high 44. And then Monday and Tuesday, partial sunshine. The high Monday, 37. Tuesday's high at 38. I'm Steve Williams for News Talk 1480 WHBC. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. So we're talking about dietary Christmas holidays and how to minimize the number of calories and fat and whatever. You know what? I always <laughs> thought of water as washing out the, the sugar and the fat, but it doesn't do that, does it? No. Okay. <laughs> We're not that lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think you got one more, right, Brad? How important is our mindset when it comes to holiday eating? You know, this is very crucial. Um, with a lot of my patients, I see them week to week, and I will say a lot of them will tell me, It's all about the mindset that they're in, you know, how they do that week. And so for any of us, you know, being in the right mindset of, you know, wanting to eat healthy and, you know, wanting to pay attention to what we eat and not wanting to gain weight is very important. If we don't give something much thought, you know, a lot of times it just kind of flies by us. You know, I'm sure a lot of us have experienced the week flying by and we don't realize, you know, how that happened. So same thing with our eating. If we're not in tune to it, if we're not in tune to, you know, how our body is feeling, if we're not in tune to what we're taking in, it's very, very easy for us to get added calories, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, added fat, added sugar, and then that just causes the scale to move. And, you know, a lot of times we'll hear people go through the holiday season, um, you know, January is a big time for people to reach out to us to lose weight. So I'll hear a lot of people when I sit down and discuss with them, you know, when their weight came on. Um, say that the holidays just get so stressful and you know this year is not going to be you know any different I think a lot of us are going to be a little bit more stressed on should we go see our family should we not see our family and you know talking to our family through zoom things like that Um, so you know it causes a lot of stress and then we don't really we're not in tune to you know what our weight is when we step on the scale so week after week of the stress and maybe you know not paying attention to our eating we tend to gain weight. And that's why typically we gain a little bit of weight over the holidays. Um, you know, 
it, it definitely adds up. And that's why if we're in the right mindset, if we're being mindful with what we're eating, we typically tend to do really well and not gain any weight, which is nice. Now at Mercy, what we're doing this year again, it worked out really well as we do this holiday challenge where we encourage people to weigh in before the holidays start. And then the goal is to not gain any weight. So whether they maintain their weight or they lose their weight over the holidays. The nice thing is, you know, their name goes into a raffle if they maintain or even if they lose. So they don't have to, you know, lose weight over the holidays. They can just kind of focus on maintaining it. And the nice thing is it does provide a lot of accountability. You know, we see it worked out really well last year for people and it seems to be working out really well this year. And, you know, talking to people after the holidays when they come in to get their final way out, they do appreciate having that accountability. Like, okay, you know, I had one cookie, you know, I have to weigh in after the challenge. I want to make sure I can win the raffle or the prize. So, you know, having that accountability is really, really helpful. So, so what's the prize? This year, it's going to be either a fancy scale, like a bioimpedance scale, or we're also um, letting them choose if they want to do one of our percent body fat um, devices where it measures okay. percent body fat. So okay. they get their choice this year, which is nice because, you know, if someone already has a nice scale and they want to do the, the percent body fat device, we can give them what they want so so serene how much water should we drink a day and and can we i'm hearing that if you drink water before you eat dinner or a lunch or whatever it sort of fills your stomach and you don't eat as much is that true that is true yes we need 64 ounces of water a day as kind of our basic recommendation now when we don't get enough water we tend to eat a lot more because our body is telling us that we're hungry it thinks that if okay if i say i'm hungry then maybe I'll get in some water, but it's actually just trying to tell you that it's thirsty. We don't know thirst until the late stages. So, you know, if your tongue starts to get dry and you're thinking, oh, I'm probably thirsty, that's not until the later stages of thirst that you notice that. So at first, it's just going to tell you that you're hungry. So I always tell people, you know, if you start to feel hungry, drink some water, make sure it's not just a thirst hunger. But we do see people tend to consume a lot less calories when they do get that 64 ounces of water in. It's a huge thing. So it just helps preventing overeating, especially during the holidays. Okay, so over the years, I've made the transition from, um, you know, sugar drinks, Coke, whatever, whatever, uh, to diet, okay, and now to water. And then it's very rare that I, that I you know, have any, any carbonated beverages, maybe iced tea, you know, with a little lemonade in it or some once in a while. But mm -hmm. um, what do you do with these people that say, I can't drink water, I have to have something with sugar in it, you know, or I, <laughs> or I have to have a diet beverage or something like that. What do you tell these people? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. Now, I think nowadays it's easier for me to answer that question than if you would have asked me that 10 years ago. You know, the food industry has evolved so much lately, you know, especially the last 10 to 15 years. So we have so many options readily available. You can go to the store and get a can of, you know, carbonated water essentially is what it is. They have all different brands and they add things like stevia to them if you feel like, you know, you need that flavoring or they have natural flavors in them. So for someone that feels like, okay, I have to have that carbonation, I can't just do plain water, we'll recommend things like that. Um, I try to encourage people, you know, every other glass of water, if you feel like there's no way that I can drink water, you know, every other glass of water, you could do a little bit of like a flavoring packet in there. It just depends what it is. Like I said, we, we like to recommend stevia more than anything else, just because it's plant-based, it's natural. You know, we find that our body digests it a little bit better, but there's all those options. Now I will tell you, I have seen people you know, turn a whole 180 degrees in regards to their water intake. When we change our eating habits and we slowly start to bring water into our diet, into our intake, you know, our taste buds change. And then we actually do start to enjoy it a little bit more. I feel like, you know, once we get a little bit away from those added sugars or those even, um, you know, those sugar substitutes, we tend to enjoy water a little bit better. It seems that, that there's more and more manufacturers um, that, that have moved to uh, um, stevia in their drinks and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. But, but it, it seems to be slow. You know, you yeah. still pick up something every once in a while and it's got some of the older 
um, sweeteners in it. Just, yeah. And after you've tasted stevia and anything, it, it, it just, and not this disgusting is not the right word. It just doesn't have the right, <laughs> uh, the right taste. I, I don't think. Uh, so you know, that's kind of where I'm at on that. But I use yeah. stevia in the tea and coffee and stuff like that. So yeah, your taste buds definitely, you know, have to adjust to the changes that you make. So you know, it takes a little bit of time, but I always tell people kind of think long term, and it's more beneficial for you. So just kind of push through it a little bit. It's always my recommendation and your taste buds will adjust. Definitely. Um, you know, it takes a few weeks to develop a habit. So same thing with your taste buds, you know, it takes a few weeks for, you know, you to get used to these changes and you do eventually get used to it, which is nice. I remember my, my father and my mother using saccharin and I'm thinking, <laughs> I ta you know, I tasted it, wasn't it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's better to not even have any sugar sweetener. Yeah. But that's all, that was all that was available, you know, 40, 50, You're years, right. away, You're 40, right. 50 years ago. So. Yeah. So. so I think food manufacturers are helping us out. I mean, I know growing up, I remember we didn't have any of these options. Um, so, you know, food manufacturers have really helped us out and changed the game in regards to all these different options that we have, which is nice. They were, they were tablets and they were quarter grain and half grain and that sort of stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the, 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 the saccharin, you know, you a big bottle with all these <laughs> thousand little pills in it, you know. So, but I, I don't even know if it's around anymore. I was just going to say, I don't even know if you could buy that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I think I still see it occasionally in a restaurant in a package. You know, everything in the restaurants now is packaged, the salt, yeah, the pepper, yeah. all that kind of stuff. But, yeah. but uh, I think I still see it once in a while, a, a saccharin in a package, and I could be wrong. So. But anyway, yeah. so I've never baked a thing in my life, okay? I don't think, okay? I probably have <laughs> cut cook. I probably have cut cookies, you know, whatever, as a kid. Um, where do we find recipes for uh, uh, stevia to bake with, to cook with, to, you know, whatever? The nice thing is all of that stuff is readily available online. Um, you just kind of have to use your thought process with, okay, you know, I'll type in, for example, you know, Google, you know, healthy holiday recipes or healthy holiday cookie recipes. And, you know, some will have, um, you know, more fat in it because they change the sugar up and it's all based on, you know, taste preference. Um, you just kind of want to use your thought process, you know, your common sense in the sense of like, okay, you know, if something, if we're switching to stevia, but they're adding whole milk instead of skim milk, well, you know, let me look at all these ingredients and how can I make this a little bit healthier? So can I still use whole milk? Or I mean, excuse me, can I still use skim milk in place of the whole milk? Um, so, it, you know, there are websites that are run by dietitians, which, you know, definitely is nice. Um, I always have patients bring in a recipe or email me a recipe and I can review it for them and let them know, you know, what would be a good alternative. Nancy, who works with us, uh, has um, um, really experimented with uh, um, substitutes and stevia and that's in mm -hmm. baking. She's really, some of the stuff is just, you can't tell the difference. So it, I it's, know. It, it's, it's amazing, so. It is, it takes but, a little bit of time to adjust, sure. you know, just like anything else, but sure. you know, it really does taste wonderful. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take our final break here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Serene, how many people are in your uh, department there, you and... Is CBD oil right for you? That may seem like a simple question, but the answers don't come from a convenience food store or Had a mall kiosk. Your medicine center pharmacist is the most accessible healthcare professional. Our pharmacists yeah. have been trained to provide expert CBD oil information to tailor therapies like CBD capsules, There's tinctures, me. lotions, and ointments for your and... particular... We have the highest quality, organic, Colorado-grown, non-GMO, full-spectrum CBD oil products. Visit the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia. You know us. We're the half off on Hot Pie Store in Louisville. Our Christmas treat to you is 50% off of our already half-off Christmas seasonal merchandise on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Our lighted Christmas pictures are a knockout. 
and we have a huge inventory. Don't miss this sale. Half off and out by store in Louisville next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. See us on Facebook and check our website, halfoffhotbuy.com. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. In these difficult days, please stay calm and make sure your medical and healthcare supplies are well stocked. Make sure you have Kleenex, acetaminophen or Tylenol, ibuprofen or Advil, Mucinex, Robitussin or Dayquil, cough drops, maybe even a humidifier or a vaporizer. You can also just turn the shower on hot and sit in the bathroom breathing in the steam. How about vitamin D and a probiotic? And a good multivitamin like Linus Pauling Super Multivitamins that you'll find only in the medicine center pharmacies. So take care of yourselves and don't stress about the coronavirus. Make sure you get plenty of rest and plenty of healthy food. Medicine Center Pharmacy, Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Are you tired of spending time sorting your medication? Hi, pharmacist Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Whether you are a caregiver or personally take medications, our pill packets will change how you take your medication forever. Instead of multiple pill bottles, you'll want to receive one easy dispensing box that contains all of your medications in individual packets. Organized by date, time, with instructions clearly labeled, it's simple, convenient, and safe. Call or stop by your local medicine center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. Welcome back to our final segment today. We're having a very interesting discussion with Serene. Um, So let's kind of move forward. All right. Well, those working from home probably are trying to follow a very different uh, eating and snacking program than they were before. Mm -hmm. So what do you suggest to try to help people stick to some sort of routine so that they don't uh, eat themselves into a corner, if you will? (laughs) Keep a structured routine is my best advice I could give to you. You know, just like if you were going to work, you're getting up at the same time. And a lot of us know if we're working from home, we're typically going to get up at the same time because maybe we're going to log into our computers around the same time. So keep that routine structured because you will do so much better with that. And keep your eating time structured. That's really important. So, you know, have breakfast within that first hour of waking up. That's crucial. And, you know, stick with, okay, you know, at, at work, I would have eaten lunch at noon. So, at home, I'm going to eat lunch at noon. Another tip I've shared with people, I've encouraged people to do is, you know, people would tell me, you know, patients would tell me that when they were working from the office, they only had whatever they packed with them. They didn't have access to their refrigerator even 24 seven while they were working. So I said, okay, well, you know, that's a great, a great thing to note. Take your lunch bag or, you know, get a container for your refrigerator and pack your lunch like you typically would if you were going to the office. But if you're working from home, then, you know, you just, because you have so much access to food, you just open the refrigerator and you take your food, whether it's your lunch or your snacks that you already packed and you put in that container in that lunch bag. And that's what you're going to eat during the day. So it's a great way to keep track of what you're eating as well. Cause I know we talked about that mindless eating, you know, not being in the right mindset. So, you know, you might be stressed working from home and you want to grab something. And if you're at work, you know, maybe you're limited to whatever's in the vending machine, or if there's nothing around you, then there's no option. So kind of having your lunch already prepared and your snacks already prepared to grab is really helpful. You know, we may not realize if we go to the pantry and we grab a handful of nuts and we grab, you know, maybe a little, uh, you know, bite-sized candy treat that was left over from Halloween. You know, it's, it's easy for those things to add up without us realizing and that can cause our weight to go up. So keep that structure and keep that routine and it's so much easier if you do that. What about lack of sleep? How does that affect our uh, healthy outlook? Uh, that can really mess up our hormones when we don't get enough sleep. You have two hormones that regulate your appetite. So you have leptin, which actually suppresses your appetite. Uh, now with leptin, if you don't get enough sleep, that's going to decrease. Okay. And then you have, um, ghrelin, which is another hormone that stimulates appetite and that increases if you don't get enough sleep. So, you know, your hormone that tells you that you're full is going to go down and your hormone that tells you that you're hungry is going to go up. 
So with that, you're kind of throwing yourself off balance as it is. You know, you're kind of setting yourself up for a rough time and a rough day. Um, and then, you know, when you're tired, you don't really make as well of, you know, as good of decisions, I should say. So that's kind of, you know, what you want to be careful about. Just like, you know, when you're stressed, a lot of times we don't choose the best option or we don't make the best decision. So same thing with our sleep, you know, we're up, if we don't get enough sleep, we're up for a longer period of time, which means that's more hours for us to be eating something. So you just have to be cautious with that. Any other tips or tricks for us to navigate holiday eating? Oh, I got plenty. <laughs> How much time do you have? <laughs> well, we have about six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, I'll limit myself all right. then. <laughs> all right, are, are we allowed to eat turkey? Are we allowed to eat ham? Are we allowed to eat certain vegetables and not certain vegetables? <laughs> where, are we, where are we at here? <laughs> so I would be cautious with ham because of the extra salt, especially with sure. the ham. You know, we tend to get in a little bit more salt throughout the holidays and we can kind of balloon up that way and that causes the weight on the scale to go up. Um, you know, it's harder for your heart to have to pump that salt molecule throughout your body because it pulls fluid with it. So, you know, I always kind of say stick with the leaner proteins like the turkey. Um, you know, the nice thing nowadays is that air fryers are so popular and everyone is loving, you know, when they make their food in the air fryer. So if you typically, you know, fry your food, why not try the air fryer? And it's a great way to still give you that taste and that texture, but not have those added calories from fat of frying. So that's kind of a great way to you know, make your holiday eating just a little bit healthier. Um, mm. Try not to skip, skip your meal. So if you know, okay, we're having, you know, a big Christmas dinner tonight or whatever it may be. Try not to go all day without eating because that tends to lead to overeating when you do actually eat because you realize at that point how hungry you are. So I tell people, you know, every day, even Christmas morning, um, you know, whatever it may be, you still want to have your breakfast, you still want to have your lunch, and you still want to have your dinner. Okay, so if you know your meal is going to be at lunchtime, still have your breakfast. Now, you may not need an elaborate breakfast, it doesn't have to be that big, but you know, you still want to have that breakfast option. And then you have your lunch and then you know, you'll have maybe a smaller dinner later that evening. But the more that you skip it, the more likely that you are to overeat. So, you know, just mm -hmm. kind of be cautious. You know, we encourage people to exercise a little bit, especially if you know, okay, I'm probably going to have a little bit more food today than I typically would. It would be a great time to get in some exercise. And if you have kids, you know, it's great to get some of their energy out by exercising, especially, you know, with the weather, we don't know if it's going to be cold or not. So it's a great way to, you know, get their, their blood flowing, to get some of their energy out, um, you know, during the day. So you could do an exercise video, an exercise mm -hmm. machine, you can go on YouTube and find so many different, you know, exercise routines to follow, which is nice. And then like we just kind of talked about, just don't forget your water intake. You know, you don't want to overeat because you're thirsty. So it's a great way to cut back on some calories that way and kind of keep your body hydrated as well. Are there any foods <laughs> foods that help fight off the virus? The viruses? <laughs> I mean, Fruits and vegetables are going to give you those nutrients that your body um, really needs to kind of keep your immune system up. Um, you know, berries are a really good uh, source of antioxidants. So those are going to be great. Um, uh, vitamin C rich foods like oranges are wonderful as well. Um, so, you know, those are things to incorporate, you know, water intake is really important as well, just to kind of keep your body hydrated. Um, you know, and I'm sure as pharmacists, you guys, I heard one of your commercials during the break about, you know, what, what kind of supplements, vitamins to take to help boost your immune system too. Yes, yeah, sir. Don't overlook your vitamin D's. Yeah, vitamin D's, zinc. Mm -hmm. That sort of stuff. Hey, um, we're kind of tight on time. Um, what if I step on the scale and I'm really not happy with my weight? What's what's my immediate? Uh, what can I do? Call me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. How do we um, reach you? <laughs> yeah, how do we Good reach question. You? <laughs> so we are, you know, always there to help. We're in the office Monday through Thursday. Um, you can give our office, Mercy Weight Management, a call, 330-588-4854, 
or you can even visit our website just to kind of see what we offer. And that would be www.cantonmercy.org forward slash weight loss. Um, it kind of goes over all the different options that we have and you could submit your information and we can you know, email you back with you know, some information that we have. Um, but it's important to kind of think back, you know, if you step on the scale and you're like, oh shoot, I had gained five pounds over the holidays, kind of think back to what you had. Think about why do you think you gained the weight? Do you think it was because you didn't drink enough water? Do you think it was because you know you weren't in the right mindset? You know, what are your, what are the reasons why you feel that way? Um, and you know, working with one of us dietitians, a lot of times we have you kind of give us some goals that you have in mind. So I think in general, if you set some goals for yourself, you know, you could do this now to get through the holidays or afterwards, but, you know, set small goals. If you're saying, okay, you know, I probably gained this weight because I didn't drink enough water. Well, let's start incorporating more water. So maybe, you know, week one, you focus on, you know, try to get a little bit more water in and build up to the 64 ounces. And once you feel comfortable with that, then set another goal for yourself. So maybe you're thinking, okay, well, you know, I probably gained weight because I didn't eat my vegetables. Well, that's a great, you know, point to get across is, okay, we need those vegetables. We need that fiber to tell us that we're full. So why not start to incorporate that? Maybe start it at dinner. And then once you feel comfortable with dinner, incorporate some to your lunch. So setting those small goals will eventually lead to the bigger goal of weight loss or eating healthy. Okay. So that's kind of a great way to start. Guess what? We're out of, we're out of time. We, need, we really need another hour I think, right? to, to, build, to build my diet. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Serene Zawari Krasuna, registered, Thanks for having me. registered and licensed dietitian and coordinator of Mercy Weight Management. We'd like to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your healthcare provider. Thanks to Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. As always, we thank your listeners for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center of Pharmacy. Have a healthy week, and we'll see you again next Friday right here on News Talk 1480 WHBC. So how many people are in your office? For this of health matters with the There's me and then my coworker, Linda. Okay. And who sits at that desk. I think you saw her before when you right first now, walk in. Sure. And then we have two dietitians that help me out during the week. Okay. So, so you, you coordinate with all the...